Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Prophecy Roundtable. Again, we don't have all the answers, but we're going to have a great conversation about the end times. And if you want to put in your questions, you can do that in the chat. Uh, if you want to become a patron, man, thank you. You can go to patreon.com forward slash Doug Hamp and you give whatever you want to give. Uh, it's a huge shout out. Thank you uh, to those who are already doing that. And we have a special guest today. I'm really excited uh, to bring John McTurnan onto the show. Uh, I first met John, uh, or I was introduced to his work years ago when I was working on Corrupting the Image, Volume 1. Well, that's a long time ago. But um, uh, he had done some work on uh, 666, of course, and The Mark of the Beast. And that's what my Corrupting the Image series have been all about. And so I'm delighted to have him back on. Today we're talking about the 666 Surveillance Planet. And just before the show got started, we were talking about how it is blowing up. So, John, we are so glad to have you here. And uh, we just love, um, you know, tell us where people can find more of your information and uh, we'll get started. Yeah, we were talking before the show and what happened was I have so many uh, spinoffs on my website that I, uh, I went to MCT, like videos.com. And then I end up, I have four blogs going at the same time, but uh, they're all under one. So you can go to MCT911.com. MCT911.com. And that should right. take you to my blog. It should. Okay. Hope. <laughs> hope so. All right. I'll just write that in the mct911.com okay so i um, just set this all up recently and that's why it, yeah. i'm not sharp on it that's all good it was it's just good. too much to tell people i had it consolidated yeah but yes we i do go back a long time with you like that and back in the beginning uh are you familiar with tom horn yes 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 it was like me and tom horn and tom had me write some um, articles for him in his mm. books but people thought we were like complete kooks. <laughs> and sure. back then, I guess maybe we were. Uh, <laughs> but it certainly, there is everything that we uh, were writing about years ago is right before us right now. Indeed, it's happening. So this whole idea of the 666 surveillance system that, that you talk about, what is that? I mean, what is it that you are seeing that is causing such consternation and how is that related to the number of the beast? Well, 666 is the famous, infamous number in Revelation chapter 13, talking about just prior, actually the Bible tells us it's three and a half years, it'll be instituted before the second coming of Jesus Christ, and it'll be a worldwide numbering system and control system where you can't buy or sell without um, this mark. But also, Doug, um, the verse right before that, two verses before that in Revelation 13, is talking about a uh, what's called the image of the beast. And it says it, it can both speak and walk. Uh, so there's a high-tech... Right there at that chapter in the Bible, it's it's high tech. Now, John wrote that about a little more than 1,900 years ago, and there was no concept of that high tech. And I can remember Doug, the very I was a new Christian, and the very first time I heard preaching on Revelation chapter 13 and the image of the beast was a statue that would um, miraculously come to power. Yeah, verse four, 14, and he deceives those who dwell on the earth by the signs which was granted to him in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell uh, on the earth to make an image of the beast which, should, which was wounded but should by the sword but lived. Um, and he was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast and that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. So the the they had no concept of years back. I'm a little older than you, so I go back before you. And basically they thought it would be a statue. That's really what they thought was a statue that by miraculous power 
uh, uh, some satanic power would come to life. And that was the, the really the main thought until recently, because they couldn't imagine what we see today. Isn't that amazing, Doug? It really is. Yeah, and it absolutely is. I mean, um, you know, and of course, you know, what exactly that's going to turn out to be, we'll have to wait and see, uh, you know, but, but it's fascinating to start putting things together and saying, you know, this, yeah, this definitely some sounds high tech of some sort, right? Exactly what it is, right? Uh, is interesting, right? And that's why we're talking about it. But well, um, <laughs> I'd like to go to the image of the beast first, and then we can go to the 666. Okay. So would you put that scripture back up, please? Absolutely. Okay. Now, it says, and he deceives those who dwell on the earth. Now, the, the deception there is coming from the false prophet. Mm. He's called a beast there, but he's identified later as a false prophet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. By the signs which he was granted to do in sight of the beast. Now, the beast would be um, what we call, also call the Antichrist. Right. Um, telling those who dwell on the earth. Now, here's the key to this, or one of the important keys. Telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword that lived. Notice, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was mm. wounded by the sword and lived. So this is a worldwide effort. This is tech. This is technology, uh, Doug. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a, I know. And you, when I look at the image of the beast today, that um, how it's developing, uh, it's like universities all over the world are working on it. They're, there's, they're in Japan, they're in Switzerland, they're in the United States. I mean, they're just scattered all over the world. And the, the robotics is incredible. Um, I follow the robotics very closely. And the, not too long ago, they could get a pretty good image of the person, but facial movement, the eyes, bodily movement was, um, you know, not even close. But it's mm -hmm. close now, Doug. Right. They, with the robotics... They can, and they're starting to, to get real fine muscle movement and eye movement like we do. It is amazing to see the robotics just in the last couple of years, how lifelike it is. How would you say the chat GPT uh, is fitting into this? This is a pretty recent development, and now it just is exploding, and it seems like it's everywhere. Um, you know, in fact, I just read this thing uh, because chat GPT is mostly controlled by by Microsoft. And so now Bing was asked a question, like some guy said, um, you know, I'm a, I'm so-and-so, what do you, what's your opinion of me? So Bing spit back, like, you know, you are actually a hacker. Uh, you tried to destroy me. Um, you know, you know, be nice to me and I won't hurt you. <laughs> and we're all like, Whoa, <laughs> never have you had a, a, a search engine tell you that, you know, be nice and I won't hurt you. Um, you know, it was just kind of, uh, it was kind of shocking. Um, you know, maybe this, this hacker had it coming, but still for a computer <laughs> to tell you, <laughs> you know, I might hurt you is a little bit disturbing, right? <laughs> well, there's a lot coming out about that now, Doug. Um, there's things like, um, I, I can't remember it all. It's just, it's, it's, the, this is just like in the last week. Uh, I, I heard that or and what you just said, but there were other things that were said by these computers that um, were amazing, amazing, the reasoning ability. Now, going back about six months ago, maybe nine months ago, do you remember that AI engineer that came out and said mm. that they're in yes. the process of like trying to create life artificial intelligence like living thinking he was saying and that google remember, was sentient right the google ai was sentient or something like that right yeah i don't know the specific okay. uh, yeah. for, but do you remember how they were um and i wish i knew the details but the people involved oh no no this is not happening we're not doing that this is all made up do you remember that about mm. um, the, the engineer came out uh -huh. and said they're going full blast developing artificial intelligence that can has human reasoning and thinking and was all denied. 
mm-hmm. and all the night. Now here we come about six or nine months later, and look what comes out. That right. engineer that was blowing the whistle was 100% correct, uh-huh. and he was warning how dangerous it was or potentially right. dangerous it would be. Yeah, That was just six or nine <laughs> months ago. Well, you know what's so funny is you know Elon Musk is saying – that um, you know, AI is something we got to watch out for, and therefore we should put these neural links in our brains so that we yeah. can keep up. But that seems like the the perfect way for a computer to hack us. You know, if we have a computer interface in our brain, can't we then get hacked? Uh, it just seems like a bad combination to start. I mean, I'm all for having super intelligence and all that. It sounds amazing, but it's the that I could be hacked. That's the part that I'm not excited about. So. Well, I don't know. Yeah, hacked and hacked, and th- uh, they could. They know where we're store. We're storing, uh, storing memories. Isn't that amazing? And the mm-hmm. neural link in our brain, so they can they can go in there and take out uh, memories and put false memories in, and you'd never know it. That's right. Uh, this was um, this is really serious. Oh, I know. There was a, a movie with Jim Carrey. Um, uh, beautiful something of the mind, uh, beautiful sunset of the mind. I think that's what it's called. I'm sure somebody knows what I'm talking about. It was an interesting movie. Basically, uh, he broke up with this girl. He couldn't get over her. And so he wanted to go have this operation done on his mind where they would erase certain memories related to that girl. And um, it was it was a fun story, you know, but but it's like, oh, my gosh, we are getting close to being able to do that. You know, uh, at least it sounds like we are. And then what we have with uh, the AI coming and everything. So, but okay, so let's kind of get back to our topic. How does this relate to 666? And what is the surveillance system that you really see happening out there? Well, uh, it all relates through technology. So we're going to have two major forms of technology. One that can put together a uh, the image of the beast because it says it can it, it, breath it's given breath and it can think and uh, speak and and walk and then it follows with another high tech with this uh, s- numbering system and that no one this is a worldwide numbering system and that no one can buy or sell unless they're in this numbering system and that's how the two of them come together is the high tech. Uh, so what I saw years ago um, was this, and it was it was so minor compared to today. This um, merging of records and the digitalizing coming, and all you got to do is project it out. I mean, they're not going to stop once that technology comes online. They're not, they meaning the government, the establishment, the new world order, um, they're not, they'll laugh at you if you try and say, no, no, we can't do this and we can't do that because I, because someday it'll be used for evil, which of course it's going to be. And in fact, it is really now. We're, we're really, uh, Doug, I'll give you a perfect example. Um, I, what comes to mind to me is what in Canada, when the uh, truck drivers were revolting there against being forced to take the COVID shot and all, well, what the government did, it identified all of the uh, the, the protesters, and then they went in and, and locked up all their bank accounts. That was it. Um, that's a, hmm. that's how dangerous it is. Hmm. So when right. when the government has power like that. It's frightening because government sooner or later turns evil. And that's what the way we've seen it in history. And that's what's happening right now before our very eyes. It is, it is, they're weaponizing everything. Everything is being weaponized. So in the end, if the government doesn't like our politics, Mm -hmm. if it doesn't like our religion, and ultimately it's going to be a religious it's going to be part of a religious system where you're going the, everybody on earth is going that's left is going to have to uh worship a uh, the beast 
or they're going to be killed. And then when you ag agree to worship him, you come into this numbering system, which will allow you to buy and sell. So just project out where we are today. You don't have to project out too far. We can see it happening politically, mm -hmm. easily politically. But the next step beyond politics is taking it to a level of worship. So if people will not worship at the Antichrist, the beast, um, then they can't buy or sell. They can't you know, buy or sell. And then they're, they're going to be killed as we see it. Uh, the, the, so it's, it turns into like the mark of the beast, as I see it, is like proof or the initiation into this future uh, religious system. The ones that don't go into the system and receive this mark, the Bible says, on their right hand or foreheads, they can't. And then they are eventually, every, they're going to hunt down everyone that they can and kill them that won't join the system. Hmm. So I, I look yeah. at it, Doug, is like you take like Hitler, this mm -hmm. totalitarian like Hitler on steroids with all Hitler would do it if he could, if he could, but they couldn't. And now we've got all of this technology, all of it at the hands of like a Hitler madman. And that's what's going to happen. Right. So. Some years ago, uh, you, you wrote an article about uh, chimeras and uh, hybrids and uh, that stuff. And, and that's what I quoted in, um, in Corrupting Image Volume 1. How do you think that plays into it? You know, the whole genetics, uh, you know, bioengineering things. How does that connect with the Mark of the Beast and, yeah. you know, now, the 666? Yeah, now we're really getting into some heavy stuff because we're having <laughs> transhumanism right and we've got a couple things going on that are that are running parallel let's put it this way they're going to all converge but we there's a group and it's the world economic forum but behind that it's the new world order and their agenda is wide open they're out and they're, they're not hiding anything now it was years ago you could find it years ago, but you had to dig. And now it's Klaus Schwab. They they have, um, he just had the meeting. In fact, it's going on right now. It's just over where he said, basically, we have 10 years left before we're no longer human. He just said that. You, you, genetically, we're going to be all different inside. And uh, they're developing the mind. The, the, their goal with computers, with the AI, is to have it like ability to think like a human, like human emotions. And so, in other words, you could download your whole mind into an AI mind and it would think just like you think now. And that's where the image of the beast comes in. But what's going on? is you take like the uh, COVID shot, not the shot, but the boosters and that. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. the shot and the boosters. That's genetic. Mm -hmm. That's not a vaccine like anything we had in the past. That is a genetic and it's, um, it's directing our uh, DNA to perform something that's really not human. It's a slight move. It's a slight move towards it. Um, but when you study the speakers and, and, the, and the, the people that are behind it, and there's the one guy from Israel who I just can't think of as Noah. Noah Harari. Uh, yes. Yeah, Harari. Noah yeah, Harari. Yes. Yeah. 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 He's all, yeah. He's out in the open. I, I, anytime I can hear, hear him, anytime he speaks, I go right over to it. And I, I want to listen to every minute because he's literally telling us beforehand what's coming right and the genetic manipulation is coming right so that's a that they're taking us away from being created in god's image right that's exactly. what chimera is, so chimera is two species yeah. that become one like so they're changing us into something else which is a lot they attempting to do it which is along the pathway to creating transhuman 
mm-hmm. where we go beyond becoming human. It's getting the population ready for transhuman. And the whole thing, their whole goal is whether they know it or they're just being used by Satan is to destroy us being created in God's image and likeness. That's the purpose of this. And John, I like to say it's the oldest, uh, it's the very oldest lie, trick, deception in the book. uh, That's the other side of it. The serpent told Eve, you can become as gods. You can essentially become a die. You shall not die. And so, so I think yeah. that is that is the that is the ultimate lie as it was. He declared the end from the beginning. So we see we see in a sense the very first deception to 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 mankind being the very last deception. You can become a god and you and you can become like one of us and you'll never die. You'll be immortal. You'll live forever. I would not want to live forever in in this world. No. I, me personally, I would not want to. No, we we want to be with God in His world, with uh, Jesus Christ in His world. world. I kind of like no that's sickness. And- right. <laughs> that's the second. That's the second part of it. There's two phases for that. One is uh, this is uh, I think going to be the major lie of the um, for the t- for people to take the image. Uh, I mean, to um, take the mark of the beast and worship the antichrist is you won't die that's the you in other words your body is going to become a machine so if you're uh, let's say you're you break an arm you probably have torsion bars as muscles so they'll you wear out a torsion bar and you'll go and they'll take out the old torsion bar and put a new one in that's their that's what they that's what their goal is this is how they're going to evade death but the key is the mind. And that's why I've been watching artificial intelligence closely, closely. And they're mm. there. I mean, they're beyond what we know now. And that's why mm-hmm. uh, Harari and Schwab are coming out and saying they're giving us 10 years. But I don't, I think in their plans, it's all set in 10 years. So mm-hmm. they're going to start implementing this much, much sooner. And the, trend, the transhuman, they want to change us from mm-hmm. being a unit being created in God's image to c- cyborg, part, probably part... Uh, Nephilim! Blood. <laughs> yeah, man-made. Part, part, part God, part man. Man-made Nephilims. Mm-hmm. That's what mm-hmm. it would be. Yeah. So God, man is the creator now, Doug. Man right. is the creator, right. and God is on the out. We don't need God anymore. Yeah. Right. <laughs> we can yeah. manipulate genetics. And we can make cyborgs and all, and we can live forever. That's what that's what they're thinking. Yeah. So God's on the outside of his creation looking in. How, how's yeah. that, though? Well, it's interesting to me that, you know, the old joke uh, about the atheists and what they can create. And God's like, well, give me my dirt back. No, you, you can't, <laughs> you know, you, you, you give me the, give me the minerals. And so that we're not creating anything, I, you know, mm-hmm. again. Exactly. We're, we're, right. I believe a lot of this is sort of a recapitulation and a lot of this technology, if you will, uh, is sort of, it, it stems. And again, I don't, I don't hold Enoch up to scripture level, but I know, I do believe it's very valuable and that I do believe a lot of this was taught back to Genesis six incident, if you will. And I believe a lot of this information and knowledge really, really got cranked up and kicked off right around the time of Hitler. And when we brought all these Nazi scientists over here and in, in, in our so, you know, I, I, I like to stick my head down the rabbit down the rabbit hole, but I just don't like to go too deep into the conspiracy <laughs> theories. I'll put it that way. <laughs> so, yeah. John, well, I've got a question. Uh, sure. What do you what do you think of the hive mind idea? Do you think that will have any bearing on the image of the beast or does it fit in anywhere or have you thought about that at all? Well, I've looked at the hive mind a little, but could, could you give me just what your big picture of it? Well, yeah, the basically, you know, that you can create a, a, you know, not just a network in your brain, but you can hold, create a whole network yeah, okay. of yeah. brains linked together. Yeah. Yes, so just like, yes. uh, you know, the Before, hive in a, in a you know beehive right you have a collective thought right the the borg right the borg uh it's probably the yeah. best way to explain that so 
Yes. You know, yes. some people yeah. think that's where we're going. So I think yes. it's kind of interesting. Well, here's what I've thought from way back that a part, a major part, or a, a, a certainly a, an important part to the coming new world orders control and what they're setting up, the image of the beast and the mark of the beast would be mind control because Satan wants to destroy us. He wants to control us, no freedom. And um, so what they want is to, and we can see it with like the 5G coming and everything. I mean, I'm ahead of myself. There's so much going on in my mind because so much is developing in the last month that I'm, <laughs> I can't talk, Doug. But they are literally oh, through Musk hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, hooking us up. And they're talking about having networks of people where minds all work together. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. That is what they want to do is do exactly as Musk is talking about. But I, it's not going to be by operating and put something in, in your brain like that. It's not going to be like that at all. So that we don't we can't think on our own. It's mind control. Mm -hmm. The idea of God and Jesus Christ and salvation and repentance will be blocked completely. Mm -hmm. Totally. Mm -hmm. And that what will be in our mind is worshiping the not ours, those that are alive during that time. The, it'll be worshiping the image of the beast and doing his bidding and his will. So yeah. Yes, yes, mind control is going to be a big, big part. And you can see it. We're, we're, we're in it. Um, Doug, the uh, DARPA, I also follow DARPA. Are you familiar with DARPA? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they are, they've, the DARPA is really diabolical. It really is. And they've developed helmets now that and and it was developed probably three or four or five years ago and then i haven't heard anything since but what happens is in the helmets they have um uh, able to project uh like electronics and mm. go into the area of our brain for example where fear is mm. and shut it off wow. shut fear off so you got soldiers huh. that are absolutely fearless and then you're able to communicate amongst like a, a, a sergeant can communicate to all his men by thought, mm -hmm. by thought. You could project it. So, and, and they knew where you were. And, and so you could be like two, 300 yards away. And the sergeant, lieutenant, captain, you know, they would, you personally, okay, now go north 100 yards and turn here. Uh, you could, through communication, you could tell. The higher ups, like I've just observed a uh, platoon of soldiers coming our way. That was that was in effect five years ago, hmm. mm -hmm. and they, they had to perfect it. And uh, but that was their plans were to have the soldiers wear these helmets, with their thoughts. First of all, they could control the emotions. So if they if they meaning the military authorities wanted you to charge a position where it, you would get killed, but you'd be able to be effective. Then they turn the fear off and tell you to go do it. You do it. And then you could communicate by thoughts. You wouldn't have to get on a, uh, a handy talkie or anything like that. A cell phone. You could communi communicate by thoughts. Mm -hmm. That was in the pipeline. Right. Yeah. Four and, and, years, yeah, yeah years. they're definitely working on this. Um, and one thing that they're saying is we need to actually become kind of a swarm mind so we can protect ourselves against AI. I mean, it's it's the weirdest thing that we see happening is that we're creating the monster apparently with AI, but then we need to somehow defend ourselves against the monster that we're creating by all becoming a hive mind, which sounds like a bad idea to begin with. But I mean, it's all just sort of convoluted and yet you know, it sounds like the craziest science fiction and yet we see it happening, right? I mean, that's what's so mind blowing is that this is happening in front of our eyes. And if you've been paying a little bit of attention, you just have to open your eyes and say, there it is. Right. So yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of weirdness happening nowadays. And, you know, um, a lot of that we, we could see in science fiction movies. Mm -hmm. Like, um, 
uh, the Matrix. Yep, yep, yep. Right? I mean, there you go with artificial intelligence, right? Versus right. man. Uh, and then we had um, the Terminator. Of course. <laughs> with the uh, robotic bodies that, but they can think and act and all. So there you go. The, um, uh, Doug, I did a little research and I found what I consider the first realistic science fiction movie. Mm. And that was, um, oh my, I can tell you the year, 1956. And that was, um, isn't that terrible? Hmm. But they had a robot in it that could communicate and it, it didn't look exactly like today. Um, I can't think of it, but it was, if you watch that today with the color and the plot and all, uh, they had like a sort of semi computer in it. Um, you, it, you would enjoy it. You enjoy, enjoyed it. Forbidden planet. It was called mm. the forbidden planet. Okay. And I suggest you go look at it. And that is the, 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 the science fiction movie that before that it was like the spaceships, <laughs> weird looking things with sparks coming out and all <laughs> but when you got to the forbidden planet it it changed and from that time on it was, it was back in the mid 50s 56 mm -hmm. from that time on it was progressed to to where it is now uh, but amazing the concept they had in 1956 where it would fit today hmm. wow wow uh yeah, we're we're definitely uh, we're moving towards something. Uh, I think there's no question about that. Um, but can I take us back to the six 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 because yes. obviously that's an important number. How do you think this, whatever this mark, whatever it's going to be, the mark or the number, or whatever their relation is necessarily, how do you think that will be applied? And what are the um, I don't know how would they watch and see if you don't get it or you know, that kind of stuff. Well, uh, I, there were several things I watched <laughs> and one of them is the mark. Now there's a little controversy about it. Some people think it's going to be a, uh, like an implanted chip in you. Um, and you, that it, it'll be able to tr transmit and receive. I personally think it's going to be a, uh, tattoo. That's what I personally, or it's going to maybe it might have electronic circuits in the tattoo, but it's going to be a tattoo. And what I've noticed uh, lately, and it's, it's exploded out in the open well, ever since COVID was the QR code. And I, I, I can get a QR code up. I don't know if it's big enough for the screen to see it. This is on my brochure. The 666 surveillance system. And I have a QR code in it right here. Can, can you see that, Doug? Is it big enough for you to see? Yeah, I, mean, I can see that it is a QR code, but it's hard to see with any good resolution. Right. But yes. yes. Well, in the QR code right here between my fingers, which you uh -huh. probably can see, there's an eye looking at you. Okay. The all knowing surveilling eye. <laughs> and, um, what they did was, and, and the reason that this is so important is Bill Gates is big time behind this. And he's put millions, like tens of millions of dollars into the, into developing the, the uh, QR code for everybody in the world. They want everyone in the world to have their own QR code. Now, the passports, uh, the, they want these international passports. The passport, when you open it up and you need to show it or scan it, it's a QR, it's a QR code, exactly like I have here. And everyone in the world is going to get a, a QR code. Now that's their plans. Everybody's going to get a QR code. So the, it's got th three boxes up on it, and at each box I put a six in it, so it's six six six. And then in the middle is that all-knowing, like, government eye watching you that you can't buy or sell without that. The all-seeing so, eye. <laughs> yeah, the all-seeing eye. But um, 
This is serious. I mean, they have plans for everybody in the world is going to have a QR code. That's there's no need for that, but they that's what they want. And the excuse is medical, they want all the medical records on it. And if you're going to travel, um, you know, the QR code is needed, medical, but it's going to be way more than that. Everything's going to go on it, everything will be in that QR code. So I think possibly now that the QR, I'm not saying for sure, but the QR code will be the mark of the beast because they can get them real small. These QR codes can be really tiny. And Doug, there are people that have had them tattooed on them. They have their own QR code. Hmm. Uh, they went to a um, tat uh, tattooer. And they actually, it, it takes a long time, but they did it and it works. You can scan it and it, it'll work. So it have to be done in mass and have to be done quickly uh, to do it. Uh, but the way Bill Gates is behind it and all the money that's behind it, and it's a worldwide system, you could have numbers on it. And also it says the name of the beast. Well, they could put the name of the beast on it also. So are you are you saying that just getting a QR code is no the mark? And if no. you get a QR code that you're damned forever or no, 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 no. Okay. That's part okay. of the religious worship system. Okay, okay. No, no. You you know, you can get a QR code now and use it as your scan it, you know, and pay bills with it and all. You could do it. That's not the mark of the beast. The mark of the okay. beast is when it's got the numbering system of six six six. And if you read that, it says the name of the beast. Is involved, and it's the initiation into a a, a worshiping a man as God. Hmm. Okay. So there's got to be the worship aspect in it. For yes. This to become... Absolutely. Okay. Okay. That's what that's what makes it mm -hmm. uh, the so I'm going to say spiritually deadly. Okay. The QR code by itself. I mean, it can be used to like let's say against us by the government right but that's not uh what the bible is talking about those that take it or eternally separated from god and all that that is when it's you're acknowledging you're going to worship this man as god people get this mark on them that allows them to be in the economic political system that has been uh, taken over by this man and you have to worship him Mm hmm. Okay, but but so you you see this? I mean, do you think someone's going to really get a QR code on their head? Like, do you think that's why would they do that instead of their right hand, for example? Don't know. No, maybe it's in fashion. Maybe maybe <laughs> people that don't have right hands. Do you, do you think it's possible that that whatever this mark is may not be something that you go out and get, but it's something that happens to you like maybe there's a genetic transformation and then this is a byproduct that's kind of how i see it you know when people were getting the polio vaccine years and years ago or was it polio or uh, smallpox. smallpox smallpox yeah I've so got they got right yeah okay yeah so real vaccine you know, by the way i never called smallpox well whatever i mean <laughs> you know regardless Versus of whether you should have should, MRNA, whether you should or should not have gotten it you got it the reason was, in theory, to not get smallpox, right? But the side effect was a little bump on your arm. Do you think that's a, a possibility? I don't know. Well, I mean, it's a numbering system. That bump would have to have a numbering system on it of some sort. Because mm -hmm. it mentions the 666 number, and right. then it mentions the name. The name of the beast is also right. be there. So... Yeah. I could see what you're saying, and except mm -hmm. that the Bible says it's a numbering system, I, I don't think that fits the way I but look the, at it. But the numbering system would have to be individualized, sort of like a, yes. you know, well, so, but this just says that it's going to be uh, just the same number, isn't it, like 666? So that wouldn't be specific to each person, like your Social Security or something like that. Like this is, everyone has the same number. Right, right. And that's why I said the QR code fits it. Okay. Because you've got 
the way it's structured right now, this uh, is a uh. this is a real not a real QR code, but it's structured like a real one. Yeah. You've got three sixes. Those bo you see those boxes? Oh, yeah. Dude. Yeah. That's there. The fourth box is not there. Yeah. So you could have six six six. You could have this room for the, the name of the beast also. Mm. And then the QR code would tie everything together. It would mm. tie it all into that system where everything is digitized and it's connected with the uh, 5G, 6G, whatever it will be, 7G, and instantaneously, mm -hmm. everything you're doing is being monitored. E wow. Everything. Yeah. Boy. <laughs> so why would people get this? I mean, obviously, there's a threat of death. <laughs> That's yes. one one reason. He's a little blind. Sorry. He's, he's, yes. He's an angel of light. He's deceiving. They're all, they're all being deceived. Yeah. They're all like, this is a good thing. Right. So yeah, yeah. Two, there's two things involved, in, I think, in this. Number one is you you mentioned it early, uh, Brother Scott, is um, uh, promise of eternal life. I think that the uh, image of the beast is going to be a prototype. Because it's going to be an act, exact image of him, and it's going to walk and speak and, and breathe. Hmm. So I think that it's a prototype, and the 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 beast or the antichrist beast is going to say, if you join this, if you worship me as God, you can become one too. Like this image of me here, your brain, your thinking will be all transferred in here. That that's and again, we're I'm speculating, but. I, the why would they take it? So I'm thinking because they can be promised eternal life. So this will be the prototype. And the other thing is the supernatural angle with the beast because he's like he he's, takes the deadly wound and then he and then he's uh, like resurrected. And you can see that in um, Revelation 17 about he was not and then he was. Uh, so I think the people are going to see this. And we know from uh, Revelation chapter 11, when the two prophets of God are killed in Jerusalem, all the world sees it at the same time. And we look out there now, and there is high tech that can do it. There is high tech. And every year it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. The, the, the smartphones, you know... Um, Every eye shall see. Every eye shall see it. So there's a combination of things that are going to drive people into this. But I think the big lore is going to be eternal life. Hmm. So the the image of the beast is going to be the prototype, and the people can see it. And that's hmm. what he's promising them. I, I'd say what's interesting, and I remember this from a kid, and it's in my dad's book. I think I reread my dad's book, but he wrote in the 70s. But he was speculating even back then as to how this prophecy would be fulfilled, you know, and, and he was mentioning that was like early on in the days of satellites and where TV was getting in every house. But that was in America. That was not India and in these poor third world countries in which they might be dirt po, but most people have a cell phone this day and age. I mean, not everybody yet, but but most people uh, this day and age literally Everything it, it, you go back and look at some of those books uh, from 60s and 70s of, of people speculating about the end times, and they didn't even vision where we're at right now with this. Right, so that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I have my my cell phone here. Well, I minister in um, Pakistan, I in in India, in Nigeria, and oh, and, and I do want to add. Uh, about the 666, particularly, well, it's in Pakistan, but particularly in Nigeria. But what happens is you can get a group together. If, you know, a village may have one phone, but they can use that phone and the 20, 30 people can be a part of it. So not everyone has to have a phone worldwide. They just have to have access to the to see the event as it's happening. Um, mm. Wow. Wow. If if I could add something here, Doug, that Please. I think you'll find very interesting. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, my this brochure is uh, translated into several uh, languages, mm -hmm. and a lot of them have gone out. So in Nigeria, it's a, a excuse me, Kenya is a third world country, 
and I'm working closely with a uh, pastor there. And I have four main brochures, and three of them are really doing a lot of Lord's work. But the fourth one, this one, I have it in English. I have it in Spanish. Um, and that was about it. So I'm talking to the, the pastor, and I said, man, there's some time I'd... I hope in the future we could use the uh, 666 surveillance system. And he said to me, we can do it now. I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, during COVID, in the beginning of the month, the people were not really under any control. It was a, um, a lot of poverty in Kenya, big slums. So in the beginning of the month, they were free from our point of view. At the end of the month, the government had uh, issued what they call the Haduma number, Haduma number. And basically, it would be like our Social Security number. But all of a sudden, at the end of the month, if you if you, you went to the hospital, you're going to get treated, you have to have a Haduma number. Uh, if you're going to have a bank account, you had to have a Haduma number. If you were going to have any anything at all, you had to have a Haduma number. So the people, uh, and that, that wasn't only in Kenya. It was all over uh, huge sections of Africa. This was implemented during COVID-19. And, and this brochure now, we can't give them away fast enough in Kenya in particular. We're not, we're not working in the other countries right now. But this brochure is amazing how they, they see it what happened to them, what's happening. They see what the Bible says, and it's winning all sorts of souls to the Lord in uh, in Kenya. It's in Swahili. That's in Swahili. Boy, that is exciting. And I know that you have to go soon, so I am uh, just want to let people know that if they have questions uh, for you, this would be a fantastic time uh, to take those. Um, so, I've kind of been looking through. I haven't seen any specific questions. I don't know, Scott. Have I maybe missed some that you've uh, nothing you've real seen? specific or anything? Okay, <laughs> I, I found one interesting. Uh, yeah, it was more about like, uh, for instance, obviously in our culture we don't eat rats, but <laughs> they were asking. You know, she was speculating as to perhaps there was something going on uh, with eating uh, eating rats and, and pigs in Isaiah 65 and 66 and how this might relate and and uh, but I don't I don't know that that has anything to do with it but you know as far no, as what are people eating um, I, I I look at it as that's just you know y'all showing us he doesn't change <laughs> so, but I didn't really see many I saw more statements than I did questions though yeah yeah yeah. Well, I mean, this is really fascinating. Um, John, I want to give you enough time to to get to your uh, next engagement. But um, tell people again where they can find your stuff and how they can really the, connect the, with you. The easiest way to find me is usaprophecy.com. Okay. usaprophecy.com. Everything mm -hmm. gets sorted out, which I was telling you. My books are there. My brochures <laughs> are there. Yeah. have a section on healing the brokenhearted is there um videos are there so that's the easiest place to go to usaprophecy.com awesome awesome well doug and yeah. um you know i've been that i've been at this for a long long time mm -hmm. and uh it, it, i'd love to show you if i can find it real quickly yeah my, please do my first be... brochure oh, that I awesome 666 oh okay here is one not too long ago but you have to see the first one, Doug, and I know it's here. <laughs> I should have thought of it before the show. No, it's okay. It it doesn't have like the barcode on it, does it? <laughs> uh, uh, it has the uh, UPC. Because, code. yeah, because uh, I, I mean it's interesting. I remember when the barcode was going to be, you know, six six six, and I remember that. Geez, that was kind of scary. That was like early nineties, and. Um, it made so much sense, right? You had six, six, six encoded in that number, yeah, but now yeah, yeah. we don't really think anything of it. But clearly, you know, whatever this number is, uh, is going to be something that's going to affect all people. I happen to think it, it might actually be biological, which could be an interesting idea. But I don't know. We'll, we'll have to wait and see how it's it, all going to come together. I can't yeah. find it. I don't know. But you, you should yeah. see how 
how it's progressed from the first one. I made like a puzzle and I yeah. had big government agencies and I was <laughs> intertwining. Right. And now it was so primitive compared to uh, <laughs> today. That's really awesome. Well, thank you, John. Uh, I really appreciate you coming on. So um, again, uh, usaprophecy.com is where people can find you. And um, man, thank you for sharing your yeah. insights and, yeah, Doug, no, one thing in, in closing, i just like to leave with everyone. What's happening is more than what we discussed. I mean, mm -hmm. there's huge wars building in the middle, potential for huge wars building in the Middle East. And of course, that's in the Bible, but we have what's going on in the East and Europe. And now we have China. Um, and it, they're talking about, I mean, the debt is, we can't sustain this debt. There's a whole bunch of things. The, the world government they're talking about. So this is what the technical aspect that we're looking at, uh, Doug, right now, of where this is going. Mm -hmm. It fits in a much bigger picture. Right. And it's all, it's all heading to a... It's going to be meeting up real soon in the future. So mm -hmm. that's I believe that that's uh, before the yeah. coming of the Lord. This is there's a spiritual, real spiritual element in this, and the Bible talks about it all. One world government, uh, war, major world wars before Christ coming, the nation of Israel being reborn, and all this high tech stuff being used in this government to control the people. And if you don't, if you won't be controlled, they're going to kill you. And that's not new. The Nazis did it. The communists mm -hmm. did it. You know, every these two bit sure. dictators, they all do it. Yeah. That's absolutely right. Yeah. Well, um, well said. Well said. Uh, thank you again. USAProphecy.com is where people can find you. And uh, thank you. So we'll let you get to your next meeting. Okay. Yeah, and, I have uh, one in, uh, in a couple minutes I got to get to. Okay. All right. We'll see you later. God bless you now. All right. All right. See you. Keep... All right. So what's that? She actually cut him off when he was telling you bye. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, <laughs> um, you know, so uh, the whole thing about uh, the 666, I mean, of course, there's lots of different opinions. You know, as I was saying that it was going to be the the uh, barcode years ago. Right. And that kind of came and went. Then it was going to be the. Um, uh, what is that little chip that they put inside of you? You know, like, the, um, you know, microchip. so all these. Well, not yeah, not just the microchip, but. Um, you know, all these different things have, have essentially come and gone. I, you know, so I had a guy in my show some years ago, his name was Tyler. He was a PhD in pharmaceutical sciences. And he said the average molecular weight of one base pair of DNA and RNA is 666 grams or the 666, um, atomic mass units. And that kind of blew me away when he said that now, you know, maybe that's correct. Maybe that's not. But, you know, when he said that, it just blew my mind um, to really, you know, start thinking of, of all that this could be. I, 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 I mean, again, I think your uh, your your understanding and your theory that it's related to our DNA and corrupting. We're made in the image uh, of Yah. So it's when when we start tinkering, tinkering around with his creation, how he chose to, to create us in our design, because that's what we are. We are, we are his, uh, our DNA is what makes us and he designed our DNA. Mm -hmm. Um, and again, I mean, we can speculate and theorize as to, as to why he did it, how he did it. We just know mm -hmm. he did. Right. Uh, but in, in, so, in, in many, many, many respects, I mean, we are made in his image. We are made in the image of God, the most high. Uh, in other words, you know, and, and it was weird. We, I didn't uh, interject at the time, but I've been studying uh, or, or I, I don't want to call it studying, but I've been I, I was looking at uh, in preparation for our discussion on Sunday with Sean Griffin and uh, this guy, Ken, on this discussion on is is Yeshua mm -hmm. Yah or not. Mm -hmm. I was looking into the image. In other words, and in my research, and I call my research using a BLB app or eSword or something like that, <laughs> it was, you know, obviously uh, scripture is clear that Yeshua is the image of 
the invisible most high, the invisible God, the most high, Yahweh, yod heh vav heh however we want to say his name. Mm-hmm. And what was interesting in my study, I was looking, obviously, it, Revelation has a lot of uh, use of that Greek word image. Mm-hmm. So sort of like a sons of God or, or, or better yet, maybe the um, incident where Nimrod became a gibberim. You know, he was in the face of Yah. Mm. Um, so that's so I'm thinking maybe that there is, you know, Satan wants his little minions to be right. in his image. Now he obviously is limited. Mm-hmm. He has to borrow from the most high gods right. creation. He can't he can't create anything, but he wants um you know, when you're, when we're talking about that image, could it be sort of not only what we've talked about, a, like a statue, if we look back in at Nebuchadnezzar, that was an image of Nebuchadnezzar that all were required to bow down and to worship or they face death. Um, mm-hmm. So it could be something like that where there is worship involved or, or, or whatever, but could it, it could, maybe it could also be that this beast whose deadly wound was healed is, is, you know, some type of, you know, potentially a resurrected person. The beast is out of the abyss. Mm. There's, it's almost like a, maybe it's not totally human. It's in the image of, of, of some of the, some of the stuff we see in ancient, uh, ancient history, uh, you know, that, that has been, it's been mm-hmm. chalked up to mythology, but mm-hmm. it's it's everywhere all throughout the world. And again, I'm just speculating, theorizing. I'm not teaching this as as doctrine. It's just uh, it's it's they got me thinking when I was studying the image of God and how Yeshua was his perfect representation and image, like looking in a mirror. Obviously, Yeshua was more than a than than just a two dimensional mirror, but he was less than what. Yah is outside of his creation. And so I'm just wondering if this, if, if that's something similar that the beast creates it, tries to, like you said, corrupt the image and, and create, create, create uh, this, this, this leader, if you will, in, in the image of the beast. And, and we, and then he wants to convert us into that image, you mm-hmm. know, as an angel mm-hmm. of light, an angel of good, this is going to sound good to people. Right. I don't think it's going to be. Now you're going to have those that aren't of the faith that are like, yeah, uh, uh-uh. <laughs> you know, I'm not doing this. You're going to have Muslims right. who, who will reject this. I believe you'll have atheist scientists who will. Re- I, I believe there's a lot of people who are going, no, no, no. I don't want any part of this, whether or not they are of the faith or not. Mm-hmm. But when people get hungry, you know, and yeah. I say this a lot, Doug. My concern is if and when this happens, and if it happens in our lifetime, or if it happens in the next. 10 years, give or take. And we've got a bunch of Christians running around thinking that they are still here. So therefore this cannot be it. <laughs> I'm hoping right. and praying that at that point in time, <clears throat> that doctrine will have passed by the wayside and, 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 and gone <laughs> yeah. to the graveyard that it deserves. <laughs> so. Right. Yeah. Um, so here's a, a comment from Neil. He says, if you read the text 666 is not the number of his name it is a number which is the number of a man very different things uh very coded um yeah neil it's interesting because uh it's actually what we call an anarthrous um uh word because the the article uh the indefinite article uh does not exist in greek so we could translate it two different ways it's the number of a man of one man or it's a number of man right and and if what i was suggesting that tyler the pharmaceutical student uh shared with me that this is the atomic weight of dna and rna 666 atomic mass units wow (laughs) you know that could really be something uh but then it's also related to the beast right And, and i think as a lot of you guys know in my crypting image series i'm making the case that that 666 or the mark of the beast is going to be based on a genetic hybridization of Satan and a person that we call the Antichrist or the beast, whatever, that they will literally become one. This is the incarnation of Satan. 
And uh, I take this all the way back to Genesis 3.15, where, you know, it says, I will cause enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. Right? And I tell you, when I, when I first like read that in earnest years ago, and I'm like, wait a second, <laughs> something is weird here, you know? And, you know, so I started just putting, you know, two and two together and I ended up with, with, you know, with these series of books. So, you know, I think that there's going to be a lot of fear, obviously. Uh, the fear is going to be the, the factor that really makes people want to do this. They're going to want to upgrade to become a God so that they can fight against what? Fight against Jesus who's coming. You know, and so so that's my my basic theory. That's what I talk about in Crypto Image Three. Um, that's also what I have in my my new book that's coming out. Yay, uh, Regenesis. That's my working title at the moment. But uh, that's a fictional book. And guys, I do ask you to keep me in prayer because uh, not just me, but but this whole book. I want it to become a movie. All right. This is sort of uh, you know Marvel Avengers meets the Book of Revelation. Okay. Uh, I I think it's going to be really exciting, and I want to convey this end times message of the kingdom of God in such an exciting way that the masses can really get it. And even though I hate to say this, but people by and large are not going to pick up my book or anybody else's book on this particular topic, but a story. Oh, they love stories. They love stories. And so I really think that people are going to uh, get tuned into this. And I think that when they see kind of this bigger picture and I did my very best to put it all together based on scripture, I think it's going to open a lot of people's eyes. So, you know, I really do cover your prayers on that. Uh, just, you know, keep that in, keep that in mind. Um, because I think it's, a lot of stuff is coming. So uh, thank you for that. This is a question or a comment from Montana uh, Neuralink. Um, yeah, you know, I don't, you know, again, I don't think any one technology is evil or is the mark, but I think it's going to be a a convergence of all these different technologies together. And of course, we still have to see, you know, where Neuralink is really going to end up, but could it be part of the problem? I think it really could be. Uh, it, it's just hard to say exactly how that's going to be used, but I think any technology has potential to be used for evil. And uh, yeah, RFID chip was, uh, that was one of the the candidates for the Mark of the Beast years ago. And I think most of us have given that up by now. We're just like, eh, whatever. So this is why I think we have to be very careful that we don't start, you know, just start pinning the tail on the donkey on anything. They're like, oh, this could be it. Maybe, you know, and whether or not it's QR codes, uh, you know, I appreciate John's theory. Um, and maybe he's onto something, you know, and maybe he's, you know, he's talking about what Bill Gates is doing, you know, Interesting, right? It, really interesting. Uh, I, I still lean very heavily toward the idea that it's going to be a genetic transformation. And uh, in, in my opinion, I think there's going to be some kind of a, a little thing that comes out, some kind of little scar tissue that will result from this genetic transformation. So, but that's my speculation. Okay. So we'll have to wait and see. And I'm not sure I want to be here to, to find out. Um, this is from uh, Gary and Patty. I believe Elon Musk is a good fit. Uh, right now for the AC. He's not politically affiliated and everyone seems to love his technology that is in the world of the, or the world, I should say. Uh, what say you? Well, you know, I think, you know, I, I, I really don't want to say who it's going to be, but I think it could be someone like him. All right, that's about as far as I'm going to go because I've seen other pastors, leaders, Start mentioning people by name. Oh, look at this guy. And you know what? It, it all comes and it goes. And then we're on to the next guy. So I want to be very careful <laughs> to not say that it's going to be this guy or that person. But could it be somebody like him? Yes. Scott is laughing. Why are you laughing? No, not about that. I'm laughing because um, I looked at a video. Uh, I was trying to find something that we did. My very first show I did with you today about the 7,000-year plan, which I'm not uh. dogmatic on. I just believe <laughs> it might be correct pretty strongly. Right. And 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 as I'm trying to find it, I find an old video that, uh, that, that I've actually watched probably seven, eight years ago that the, the guy is teaching, very smart guy, Cuban guy, going, why Yeshua is returning in 2022. So mm -hmm. right. <laughs> we just got to be careful, um, yeah. like you said, on naming a person. Yep. Uh, although our, our friend Tim Cohen is pretty dogmatic about it. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, and, you know, we might all be watching uh, 
uh, the King King Charles's funeral pretty soon. You, you just never know, right? So I, could I be. I mean, and, and I may be yeah. using a walker when I'm 80 years old, and obviously, <laughs> either A, I was very incorrect, B, our calendar is more whacked out than it is, or uh, yeah. you know, I doubt I'm going to make it to my next watch date, which would be uh, two days after. Uh, uh, you know, 2070 is a pretty big, uh, <laughs> pretty right. big next. I think that's when prophecy will be off the chain again. Me and you will be dead or should should be dead by then. <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely yeah i i actually think the the uh the image of the beast is going to be more like the borg uh, that, that's my perspective um but again we'll have to wait and find out so yeah, well that some of these things like like it was i mean i remember when i used to watch shows like this and would do a live chat you know i just i was a keyboard warrior teacher you know oh you're so wrong you start doing this you get a little you start to hedge a little bit you start to you start to be a little more gracious i'm learning that over time mm -hmm. you know you start to not be you know so dogmatic on on how you understand it because there's right. a bunch of other smart people that are all you know that are all believers they're all followers they're all sealed with the spirit they're all mm -hmm. have their down payment they're 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 studying the word and Obviously, we can't all be correct because I mean, <laughs> That's right. you throw you throw twenty Christians, in, you throw twenty prophecy geeks in a room together. You just pick random twenty. <laughs> You're gonna have thir yeah thirty different opinions That's about right. practically all, who are the hundred forty four. You know, yeah. like our like our I won't say his name, but like our friend. You know, he got rather nope. upset at our show last week, and 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 you know, I just replied going. Dude, I don't even want to talk about it with you. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but I love him. I yeah. just don't want to talk about certain I issues know. with him anymore. I know. Yeah, well, let's just keep our heads down and stay humble, and the Lord will show us in time. So, uh, well, um, we're ending a little bit early tonight, but this was a lot of fun, and we're glad that everybody joined us. Uh, we're glad that John McTurney could be here. So uh, usaprophecy.com, check out his stuff. Uh, a lot of good stuff there. And uh, Scott, as always, uh, fun show. So thanks again. Uh, if you guys want to go to Israel with us next year, you should uh, go to the wakecongregation.com. You can get more information about that. Get the Wake Congregation app. You're going to love it. If you want to become a patron right here, patreon.com forward slash Doug Ham. Thank you. Big shout out to the patrons. And uh, until next time, God bless you guys.